We're talking money in this half hour of the program. Last night in Sudbury, a few hundred people went to a public forum called The Rich and the Rest of Us. It was a discussion about income inequality, how the rich are getting richer, the poor poor, and the middle class seems to be vanishing. Now, there was a lot of talk by union and labor leaders about what the government should and shouldn't do. But a few people also stepped up to the mic to tell their own stories. And here are some of them, beginning with a woman who was one of the first to speak up. I came up early because, unfortunately, I have to go back to work. Okay. <laughs> where, where do you work? I work at the legal clinic, and there's something I have to do this evening because I can't do it in office hours. However, um, okay, I'm Chris. I'm a union member, steel workers. I work at the legal clinic, and I'm rich. I'm what rich. You, what do you mean by rich? Because I'm working. You see, mm -hmm. I used to be on Ontario Disability Support. I'm one of the very lucky people who got off Ontario Disability Support the right way by getting a job rather than aging out and going on a pension. Why aren't there more of me? Mm -hmm. Why is it that people on the incredibly pitiful amounts that people on Ontario Works get and the slightly better amount that people on ODSP get, why aren't they able to get education, training, get back off? They don't want to be there. I don't know a single person who is on, uh, on public income because that's their first choice. But why is it so hard to get off? Why does the system give you a kick in the teeth instead of any kind of a hand up? And I am really rich because I love my job. I get to give people a bit of a hand up, but it's not enough. Okay. And that's got to change. So I'm an educational assistant um, with, with OPSU. And when you look at me, who is raising a family of three children off $37,000 a year, which is under the low-income cutoff rate, they wouldn't even consider at the bargain, at the provincial bargaining table to even consider looking at a low-income cutoff rate. So when you have a government that is... How, how tough is it for you to make ends meet? Oh, I, I live paycheck to paycheck, and I play what I call the bill lottery which is where I throw my bills up in the air, and the ones that land face up get the full payment, and the rest get a, you know, a lick and a promise. So that's, that's how it is, though. And, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm a, I've done this job for 24 years, so it's not that I'm uh, you know, starting out and uh, start, you know, starting new and low income. I think it's a profession. Hi, uh, my name is Tammy. I'm with OPSU Local 676. Um, I'm the president of uh, the local that represents Community Living Greater Sudbury. Uh, we're developmental service workers, and we're currently in bargaining right now as well. And we did a rally the other day, and we actually had people from the community drive by and tell us to go back to work. We should be lucky that we have a job. It's unfortunate that most of our workers are part-time workers that work two or three jobs just to provide for our own families. We look after the most vulnerable people in our population, and we can't look after our own families because we don't make enough money. And we get people from the public coming and telling us, go back to work, you have a job. We do, but we need more money, and all we want is a fair contract, and the government is doing the same thing to us that they're doing to Absolutely. the teachers and everybody else. And that speaks so clearly to that, you know, so somebody who hasn't got a job is saying, geez, you're so lucky, they have no idea how much you get exactly. paid, but you're so lucky to have a job, I don't even have one. So I'll be mad at you instead of understanding this big picture, right? We have no pension, we have no benefits, we can't provide our kids with cough syrup when they're sick. We don't have the money for it. Uh, my name is Michelle Jolly and I work for, well I'm a member of OPSU, I work for the Ministry of the Attorney General and I'm one of those people that Janet mentioned who had to move back home after school. I got a $60,000 education that put me $60,000 in debt. I earn less than $40,000 a year and I'm one of those people who managed to land the job but I didn't get anything that goes with it. I don't have a pension, I don't have benefits, I'm not permanent, I'm not full time. And I get from a lot of the people who, especially those who are my age, they say, oh, you got the job, good for you. But there are ton hundreds, if not thousands of people in the same position as me who, I mean, what's going to happen if we don't get anything that goes with it? We're just stuck in these back-to-back -back contracts where we don't know what's going to happen for us. So Absolutely. How long will it take you to pay back that $60,000? Oh, God, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs>
and a the long impact, time. And the impact of that on, on my generation, because and those of us that, that think we're retiring in the next few years, you know, when, when my parents retired, there was a whole workforce available to keep producing to make sure that pension still got paid. If the next generation coming up hasn't got jobs that are producing enough income or they're not, you know, paying enough taxes and all the rest of it, for those of us who, and in the not-for-profit sector, who don't have pensions, we're going to be up the creek, then we're going to be moving back in with our children because because we won't have any money, right? So, so it's to our benefit to make sure this generation gets a really good start and really solid and good jobs with good benefits and good pensions. We will benefit from that in the end as seniors who will then have a better quality of life. Absolutely. Thank you both very much. Some voices from a public forum held at the Steelworkers Hall in Sudbury last night about income inequality. And would love to hear your story, your opinion on this issue. Perhaps you are the 1% who is making so much more than most. We'd like to hear from you, or maybe you've just got a, another perspective to share. Whatever you have to say, you can say it on our talkback line. It is toll-free at 1-800-461-1138.